you guys I am back and I just wanted to share with you my thoughts on the Netflix series Black AF which was created and starred in by Kenya Barris. Kenya Barris is the creator of Black-ish, Mixed-ish and also America's Next Top Model with Tyra Banks and so he said himself that he is a commodifier of the black experience. He is able to monetize the black experience. He makes money from presenting the black experience, quote unquote, the black experience in the media. That is how he makes his money. And I feel like this series triggered a lot of black people because of the title, because it was called Black AF. It was called Black AF, which to me means black as you can get. Black AF to me means as black as you can get. But it was triggering because the cast was biracial AF. They were as biracial as you can get to the point where the wife didn't even look like she was of black descent. Like there are biracial people like Tia and Tamara, for example, who you can clearly see are of black descent. But this show was cast in a way where the wife didn't even look like she was of black descent, but it was called Black AF. And so that triggered people, that triggered black people. And I feel like it was done on purpose. I feel like Kenyon Barrett triggered black people on purpose. And the reason I feel like that is because he said it. He said that he's a commodifier of the black culture. And he also said that he knows black people are triggered by certain things. And he talks about in one of the episodes, he talks about or he hints at something called post-traumatic slave syndrome. Now, I know a lot of y'all are not going to get with this, but this is a real field of study. Post-traumatic slave syndrome is similar to PTSD, where trauma can be passed down from generation to generation. It's like someone experiencing PTSD from a traumatic issue, and then that passes down from generation to generation, whether it's in their DNA, whether it's in their genes, which he says in the series that it's in their genes, that descendants of slaves have PTSD in their genes, or whether it's by socialization and how they're treated and how they treat their children. A doctor by the name of Dr. Joy DeGru is the one who conceptualized this theory of post-traumatic slave disorder. And so he talks about this in the series and he talks about the things that trigger black people. And then he goes on to trigger black people for profit, for profit. So I feel like the series was self-indulgent in that way. I feel like it was self-indulgent in that the title is triggering to black people because you think it's going to be about the black experience, but then the cast is biracial. And when you use biracial people to represent the majority of black people, that's, that's problematic. It's problematic whether white people do it or black people do it. Either way, it's, it's problematic. And so you say you're presenting the black experience, black as you can get, black AF, but you have bi biracial characters as your main characters. And then also the experience that's being presented is an elite experience. It's an elite experience, which not many black people experience. Now, the show is what's being called a mockumentary by most people. It's um, almost like the mocking of a docuseries, like it's like a reality TV show. It's mocking a reality TV show. So it's filmed in the way that a reality TV show is filmed, um, where there are scenes and then there are confessionals. So it's like a mockumentary of his real life. And Kenya Barris, like I said, he's a, a producer, a writer, a creator in real life. And he's created all of these shows and he's very successful. So it's showing a very luxurious lifestyle, a very elite lifestyle. And I have a problem when, when a creator, a director, a producer, a writer, when a creator, a black influencer says that they're doing something for the culture, like he's supposed to be a culture creator. He's supposed to be pushing the culture forward. He has awards for being a culture creator. So I have a problem when someone like that who says they're doing something for the culture triggers purposefully triggers the culture i have a problem with that and i also have a fundamental problem with elitism and i want to talk about something that w.e.b dubois the scholar the leader the speaker spoke about um in 1903. I want to talk about the Talented Tenth and the fallacy of the Talented Tenth. And this is what W.B. E.B. Du Bois said that kind of started the notion of black elitism. In a 1903 essay, he wrote, the Negro race, like all races, is going to be saved by its exceptional men. Two qualifiers. The problem of education then among Negroes must first of all deal with the Talented Tenth. 
It is the problem of developing the best of this race that they may guide on the mass away from the contamination and death of the worst in their own and other races. So the talent and tenth is the black men, exceptional black men in particular, who were selected because people felt that they were elite and that they had the ability to lead the black race. We also saw this in the early um, organizations of black women, like the National Association of Colored Women. Their model, their very first model was lifting as we climb which sounds good in theory. Lifting as we climb sounds good in theory because it sounds like you're lifting people up as you go up. But in practicality and in use, it creates elitism because you're saying I'm up here and I'm gonna lend you a hand because you're down there. It, it creates elitism and I have a fundamental problem with elitism and I feel like that is what this show demonstrated. It didn't demonstrate the black experience like the title leads you to believe it's going to be black AF, black as you can get, the black experience, which is not just one experience. The black experience is not just one experience and I'm not saying that black people are a monolith with one experience, but what I'm saying is that there are commonalities in the black American experience. There, there are things that a lot of us have in common, even if not all of us, the majority of us have certain experiences in common and they're not necessarily the elite experience that was showed on this show. And that, that's why it was triggering. That's one of the reasons why it was triggering. The cast was triggering and then the lifestyle that it showed, the elite lifestyle, that luxury lifestyle triggered people because the show is called Black AF, like black as you can get. And it's, it's not about the black experience at all. So later, back to W.E.B. Du Bois, in 1948, he took back what he said about the talented 10th. Basically what he said, confirming elitism, the exceptional men, the exceptional black men, how they would lead the black race, he took it back. He's a black man, he took it back himself. And he said, when I came out of college into the world of work, I realized that it was quite possible that my plan of training a talented 10th might put in control and power a group of selfish, self-indulgent, well-to-do men whose basic interest in solving the Negro problem was personal, personal freedom and unhampered enjoyment and use of the world without any real care or certainly no arousing care as to what became of the mass of American Negroes or the mass of any people. And I feel like that's what we see in Kenya Barrett. I feel like he's self-indulgent, like he's starring in a show and he's not even a good actor. He's, he's cast a show based on his own family. That's why it has a biracial cast because his own family is biracial. And I feel like that's self-indulgent to, to make the cast reflective of your own family, which is biracial, but then call the show Black AF as if it's about the black experience when it's really just about your experience. Now he goes on in the show, he has a character that explains that the black experience is not just one experience, it's the totality of all of our experiences as black Americans. And I do agree with that. I wholeheartedly agree that there's not just one black experience. There are commonalities in our experiences, but there's not just one black experience. But that's why the title to me is so triggering because you're titling the show as if it's going to portray those commonalities, as if it's gonna be something that black people can watch and get behind. And it's not, it's not that. It was triggering. And I believe he used that title, Black AF, as clickbait to get people to watch it, thinking that they're gonna see a show about the black experience and that's how he made his money off of the show. You have a self-indulgent black man commodifying the black experience for his own personal gain. That's what W.E.B. Du Bois didn't want. That's what he realized in his later life that elitism creates and that's what he didn't want, but that's what we have and this is just an example of it. That's my opinion. This is, this is all my opinion and this is not to say that the show is not entertaining or educational at some points and it's not to lead you not to watch the show because I, I am able to look past things like that and still enjoy a show believe it or not and um, and so I encourage you to watch it too because it does tackle important issues like it talks about the the adultification of young black girls it talks about um, white gays and like I said it talks about post-traumatic slave disorder it talks about very important issues in the black community it's just that the way the show is titled and marketed as if it's gonna give you a slice of the, the commonalities of the black experience when it's really not. It's giving you an elite experience. Um, and that's problematic to me. So leave a comment and let me know what you think about it. As always, thanks for watching.